Thanks for joining us today on City Talk. I'm Maria Sorreo, and joining us as she does each and every month is our Mayor, Barbara Ferraro. Mayor, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, it's good to be with you again. Always great to be with you, and you have had such a busy month, oh, or, yeah. and it's only going to get busier, but we have to first talk about that wonderful 4th of July event that we both were at together. That was so much fun this year. I love the 4th of July in our city. I plan vacations around it. And to, this year we had the um, drone show, so the drone light show. That was really impressive. It was. And so many people came. Yes. And we had great staff. I think every park and rec person was there. And Corey and Dan and Emily did such a great job of just keeping it moving right along. And so when it was over, even the traffic cleared out pretty quickly Yeah, I, in, order, in an orderly fashion. I think they said there was between four and 5,000 people. Wow. Yeah, so many. And we were talking about the last month that it was later in the day this time. It was at three o'clock mm -hmm. and it, People were steady all day, and mm -hmm. I think we kind of wondered, are they going to leave and come back for the, the drone show? But they stayed. Yeah, a lot of people stayed. They did. And then people came, some people came just for the drone show. Yes. So it was, it was so spectacular, and really, I had never seen a drone show before. And it was it was so much fun. And when the RPV logo came up, yeah, that was so special. And then our 50th, and it, it was just so much fun. It was magical. It really was. It really was. Our park and rec d department oh. did a great, fabulous job. They really did. And like you were just saying, the parking was impressive because we stayed, of course, late. But when we left, it was cleared out. Yeah. So they did a great job. They need to go to Dodger Stadium and help people get out of there because they had it set up and it was really fabulous. Yeah. And I know this year they added a, a lot more of the jumpy things for the kids. Mm -hmm. So that was really in one separate area. Of course, the food trucks and the regular food that was there. Really, it's something for everybody this year. And the music. The music was great. You know, our symphonic band performed. Yep. And then we Boomer. had yeah, Boomer a more McClendon. modern band. Yes, it was And then great. we had a country band. Yeah, that was so much fun. Yeah. So every year the city does such a great job, but I think that we definitely even moved a notch up and will the drone show be an annual thing now? I it don't was fun. know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we'd like to do it. It was really fun. We have to talk about the pie eating contest. <laughs> we can't move without talking about that. John Crookshank, Mayor Pro Tem, won again. His fourth <laughs> win and I thought it was so funny that they actually, Corey from Rec and Parks, our director, he has the names engraved on the back of the belt. Yes. So I think John was, you know, he was so excited to win that the fourth time, so. He has a special uh, method. He definitely does. That um, he uses, and poor, poor Councilman Bradley. I know, he tries so hard. <laughs> I told him maybe it would help if he shaved his beard. <laughs> well, maybe he'll do that for the next one. We never know. I don't know. <laughs> He looks so handsome with it, though. So. He does. He does. Well, it, they had a great time. They do. Doing that. And it, you know what? I think it really is impressive because they're so excited to do it, and then the kids are excited. The yeah. younger people, the adults that do it after, so they kind of set the tone for all of the fun events that we do at the Fourth of July. So I loved that. It was good. Yeah, they said they had a lot more people participate this year. They did than ever before. Yeah. Well, they have something to live up to now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they have a great time for sure. But getting back to the meeting, uh, the last city council meeting, I know there was a youth advisory committee that you're all putting into play. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we've created a new committee mm -hmm. for the city and it's youth advisory. There's going to be hopefully at least one representative from each of the junior high and high schools. Great. We um, have a plan for 13 on the committee okay and um, we'll be taking uh, applications in August and there's so many things really that youth are interested in that we thought this would be a great way to get their input and 
Also, for them to have an opportunity to participate in local government and learn about local government. And, you know, we are recruiting people for various positions all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think if more young people knew about the opportunities at the city, that we wouldn't have as hard a time recruiting. And just for them to be informed and give us their opinions on a variety of things like e-bikes and mm -hmm. e even our uh, celebrations, you know. So um, the committee is going to be shepherded by Councilman Alegria, Alegria mm -hmm. and Councilman Sayo. We hope to get at least one person from each of the, the schools. And I think when they can be hands-on with real issues, mm -hmm. it's even more exciting and knowledgeable for them. Yeah. You know, because it's it's something where they're actually taking part. I know that when they're, they have meetings that the Brown Act will be used, which yes. is a real thing for city council. Tell us about the Brown Act for people that don't know. Well, basically it's, it's for transparency. Mm -hmm. And so it expects that no more than two, so not a majority of the council, will get together to discuss any issue that is um, on the agendas. Mm -hmm. It doesn't apply to social situations. Right. But it does apply to discussing anything that is city business. So it's a good thing. Yeah, it, and I think that also it's going to be so exciting because we see so many young people that want to work in politics or get involved in politics and what an amazing opportunity it will be for them to have this hands-on experience right here. Mm -hmm. It's great that we can get our kids here involved mm -hmm. in in this and I think there, there are other cities, not on the hill, but other cities that have youth advisory councils. Right. And so Torrance is one of them and we're sort of following the plan that they set forth. Mm -hmm. But they do have to abide by the Brown Act. So yeah. if they're 13 on the board, then they can't have a discussion with more than half of them. So it'll be interesting to see how they learn all of the rules and regulations that go along with being in politics. Yeah. Yeah, city government, so it's six. And maybe get to see that sometimes you can't always do what you want. That, <laughs> wow, that's true. That is very true. Applications are going to be in August. They'll become available. So check the city's website and yeah. you'll have more information there. During the meeting, you had a very special phone call, Zoom call. <laughs> we have to talk about this. This is from our with our sister city in Sakura City, Japan, and we're getting ready for the third anniversary with our sister city. But what fun it was to meet everyone who's coming and mm -hmm. to learn more about them. Tell us about the phone call. It was really special. It was right at the beginning of our city council meeting, which of course is at seven o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. And it was 11 o'clock the next day, right. the next morning, the morning for them. over there. So we were talking into the future. That was kind of cool. Yeah. But each one of the members of the city council that is coming here mm -hmm. in August was able to introduce themselves and I thought it was great that they had prepared slides for each person mm -hmm. because then you could read it as well. Right. And there were so many interesting um, topics. And one of my favorites, of course, was the gentleman who said he was interested in laundry. Yeah. <laughs> and I told him I would have some ready for him when he got here. <laughs> they are all very nice. Yes. And it's such a wonderful idea to have a sister city. And this grew out of a teacher from Mira Last mm -hmm. who had been an, a teacher of English right. in Japan. And she arranged first to bring over some of the students she'd had in Japan. And so it, it grew from there. And so now we're hoping some of our kids can go. Right and that we can keep up the youth exchange mm -hmm. because I, as I told them the other night, I think that exchange programs are one of the best ways to promote goodwill between cultures. Absolutely. And I know you have a personal experience with that. 
Yes, through Marymount, we hosted several Japanese students. Mm -hmm. And also through AFS, we hosted several uh, Serbian students. And I'm still in touch with the Serbian students. In fact, they're my children now, grandchildren. I have great grandchildren there. Great. Um, but I still keep up with the Japanese students who only stayed with us for a couple of weeks. But I have a picture that um, had gone up on Facebook that popped up just recently of one of the girls st standing with my two grandchildren in front of the um, Wayfarer's Chapel. Oh, wow. And because I always tried to take them around and show them the, the interesting things on the peninsula. Mm -hmm. And of course, they wanted to go shopping. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I would want to do that if I went there. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's such a great program. This was three years ago that we got started with the official um, relationship of Sister City. Right, and our deputy city manager, Karina Banyalis, she, she was really instrumental in putting this together. Yeah. And this was in the middle of COVID, and. I know she had lots of phone calls where she was calling at a certain time, staying late so that, you know, because they were in their nighttime meeting. So uh -huh. it's really been a lot of work, but really so, so well worth it. And this is just going to be such a special visit for them and for us to get to know them. Yeah. And hopefully we're going to get to a baseball game. We are keeping our fingers crossed on that one. <laughs> yep. It's going to be a lot of fun, that's for sure. And I know also at the meeting, um, you, there was a discussion and you had a lot of people from the advisory boards, uh, from the different committees. If you can just kind of touch upon the fact that why those the, each board is so important um, in our city. Well, it really is. Each, each and every one of the commissions and um, committees that we have are extremely important. I don't think we could run the city without our citizen volunteers. Right. You know, we have a planning commission, traffic and safety. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed in dealing with other cities that almost all of them have some um, committee or commissions, mm -hmm. but they're not all the same for every city. It's interesting. Yeah. And so we have the ones that are important to us, the finance advisory committee, mm -hmm. In fact, recently, one of our um, former council members and mayors passed away, Steve Wallowitz. Yes. He was very special, and he had been on the Finance Advisory Committee beforehand because, of course, as people, a lot of people know, he was an accountant. And he really helped get the finances in a manner that people could understand. Right. We have our infrastructure committee. Uh, we have one for the Civic Center because we're hoping to be able to build a new Civic Center. Mm -hmm. There's so many reasons why this current city uh, hall is inadequate. Right. Everything from not having not only air conditioning, That's but right. it doesn't have uh, heating either. That's right. No employee wants to be in a, it's sort of like a barn. You know, and there are other reasons too, because it was built for World War II. Right. It was a barracks. Yeah, the buildings are very old for sure. So we need to update that. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, our planning commission. And at one time we had a, a view restoration commission, um, but because of the law that was passed by the people, mm -hmm. but pretty much, We've gotten into the process now uh, where people can apply and get relief from views that are obstructed. So it got folded into the Planning Commission. But it's so important. Uh, we have traffic and safety. Right. John Ties, the chair of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so important to have these committees that are staffed really by um, residents. Right. And, and really, so many of the residents want to be involved, which is great. Yeah, and so many of them. I mean, I am so impressed every time we have applications mm -hmm. with the experience that we have in this community. That's right. And it would be a shame to not utilize right. the knowledge and the abilities that we have in the community. I don't think there's a single person on any committee or commission 
that I wouldn't rate an A plus for just their knowledge, their caring, their concern for the community. Right. And we have a special place here. We really do. I, I know that we wor work a lot with the Emergency Preparedness Advisory yes. Committee to put out PSAs to, for public safety, things like that. Mm -hmm. And in watching the meeting, everybody that came up from the committee was so well informed yes. and really talking about what they're working on. And it's, it is really impressive. Yes, the members of all our committees and the commissions are very dedicated. Mm -hmm. They really are. We do that on an annual basis to have them come and report to the city council. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants to, to know what each person said, they can watch the city council meetings, mm -hmm. the repeats. That's right. On RPV TV. Yes, RPV TV. <laughs> we are so blessed to have so many people interested in local government and willing to serve. Absolutely. I mean, th these people are great. Now, Barbara, I told you that we keep you very, very busy here. So <laughs> strap in because it's about to get even busier. We've got so many events coming up and we want to remind everybody um, about some of them because they're really important. The first one's going to be July 29th between 9 and 1 is the free catalytic converter etching event yes and that has been such an issue i know in our community and even even in surrounding communities tell us a little bit about that and why it's so important the cars that have the catalytic converters mm -hmm. have been targets of yeah. thieves and they come in the middle of the night and they seem to be able to strip it out of a car in minutes or seconds and then off they go uh, apparently there are metals and materials inside these converters that bring money and so it seems like there will always be a thief if there's something to valuable but they're going to have this etching mm -hmm. so that because even the other day at the safety town hall right that was had with the uh, supervisor Han and uh, sheriff luna lieutenant white said he's the acting captain right if they stop someone and they have more than one catalytic converter in the car, if they have etchings on them, like a, a special ID number, mm -hmm. then they can find out whose that is and know that those were stolen. stolen right. It's just a tool to help the sheriffs uh, keep us safe. And um, I hope people will go and take advantage of that. Yeah, it's going to be here at City Hall. It is. It's hosted by the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, Lameda Station, in partnership with the city of RPV, Rolling Hills and Rolling Hills Estates. So yes. really everybody can come and be a part of that, which is great. And then uh, as a part of our summer series, we're going to have movies in the park a little later in the day on July 29th. And that's going to be Goonies, which is going to be fun. Yeah. And that's at the Ken Dida Civic Center. That's right. That's right. And that is, it's, it's always so much fun, especially in the evenings, to have things to look forward to, things to do that are mm -hmm. safe. And you can do it as a family or as a community. I just love things like that. And these are not expensive. No. Um, they do have food trucks sometimes, yeah. and there's no charge. No, you can bring your own picnic and just yep. enjoy and just have Bring a your own chairs, do your own blanket. That's and right. Have fun, That's enjoy. Right. Yes, and speaking of our sister city, as we touched upon on uh, Saturday, August the 5th, between 10 and 2 p.m., we're inviting everyone in the community to come right here to the Kendita Civic Center for our anniversary event. People will be dancing. There will be some speeches and people talking about things. We're going to share cultures. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be just so much fun. So really come out and join us. I will have free parking on site here. Mm -hmm. And that's just going to be something so wonderful. I'm so looking forward to that. Me too. Mm -hmm. That's going to be great. Yes, that will be. It will be. It's going to be a fun few days with them, but this is something where the community could come out and meet them in person. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to have a food truck there too. So you, oh, can, good. you can stay and have lunch with us <laughs> while you're visiting. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then we have a special concert in the park on August the 12th. It's 
Boogie Stars, which is 70s, which I can't wait for. I know. That's going to be fun. We love the 80s and the <laughs> 70s music. So yes, that's going to be a lot of fun. So we invite all the residents to come out and learn about um, our city leaders. And that's just going to be great. That'll be a great time as well. And there will be food and drinks and uh, inflatables for the kids to play on. It's always fun. Yes. Yes. It's great to have so many family events. Yes. I think where the whole family can come to something. That's right. Especially in the summertime because you want to get out and you yeah. have a, a fun night out like that. So yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. And then of course, the big kahuna. <laughs> the 50th anniversary celebration. That's right. That will be Saturday, mm -hmm. September the 9th at the Terranea Resort, and if you would like to join us, please do it right away. That's right. Because, well, we think that we're going to sell out. For sure. The reservations keep coming in daily. Yes. We have more than half already mm -hmm. sold, and it's going to be the highlight of the year because this is our 50th anniversary year. That's right. The 50th anniversary officially occurs on September 7th. Right. So we're having it on Saturday the 9th, which is the closest weekend date. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be so much fun at Terranea. And there may be a few surprises there. I think so. But we have people coming from all over. Yes, we do. One of my friends who's mayor of La Palma is coming. That's so nice. And of course, we're going to have guests from Sakura City. Yes, yeah, so from all over the world, literally, are coming. Yeah, yeah it's going to be so exciting. And it'll be black tie. So get your outfits now, ladies, because <laughs> it's always fun to plan for a black tie. Yes. Men can just put the black tie on. But for I think for women, we like we let all of the preparation and the picking out of the clothes. It's just so much fun. Yes. And it's an opportunity to get dressed up. It, absolutely. And even my granddaughter wanted to come. Oh, So I'm getting a ticket for her. That's great. So you'll be shopping with her too. Yes, of course. Of course, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, that's going to really be a lot of fun. If you want to go to the uh, RPV50 website, that's where the tickets are. So please go as soon as possible because they, as you were saying, Mayor, the tickets are going to pro mo more than likely sell out because the yeah. event is going to be the event of the year. So we want to get everybody there. And they should do it now because yeah. right now the tickets are $175. Right. But they will be going up to $200 on August 8th. That's right. That's right. So if you're coming, you might as well get your Book ticket now. now. Absolutely. Is there anything else that we did not touch upon that you wanted to mention before we, we wrap it up today, Mayor? Well, I'd just like to wish everyone a very happy summer the rest of the summer. Right. I can't believe it's going so fast. It really is. It's already almost the end of July. I know. It seems like after 4th of July, it just kind of zooms through. So many kids yes. are getting ready to go to college now. They're already talking back to school. And I know that's a big thing for you as well. Yes, that will be coming up shortly. Very shortly, yes. And, you know, enjoy our peninsula. They're PVIC and all the great parks and really just get out in our community and really enjoy it. So well, we'd like to see everyone out at some event. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us, Mayor, as you always do. We really appreciate your input. Thank you. Thank you. And that will do it for today's show. Thank you so much for watching and being with us. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next month on City Talk.